it has been one hell of a decade for Reading FC. And yet things still don't seem to be looking up. In this video, I'm going to give you a true insight into what really went on behind the scenes at the Berkshire Club and how key figures helped to shape the downfall of Reading FC. It all started in 2008. When Reading were relegated from the Premier League, the club's legendary owner, Sir John Medeski, was struggling to keep up with the ever-growing finances that were poured into football clubs every year, and he revealed his desire to sell the club. However, being the wise businessman Sir John is, he waited for the right person to come along. And it wasn't until January 2012 that a person fitting Medeski's criteria appeared. And he made the decision to offer them the club. Sadly, Medeski got this decision wrong. Badly wrong. The chosen man was Russian billionaire Anton Zingarovich, who had studied in Reading, and occasionally watched the Royals play at Elm Park in his younger days. So everything looked good. A billionaire owner who supported the club, who had the backing of Reading's greatest ever chairman. And it all seemed to start really well. Crucial signings saw Reading regain premiership status, and Anton looked set to become a hero. One year on, and things weren't the same. Anton was afraid to spend money, and a lack of quality within the royal side meant it was no. Surprise when the club were relegated the next season, however. Hopes looked high again after a positive summer. And bizarrely new manager Nigel Adkins helped Reading to sign some high-profile players, such as Royston Drenthe. It was a shame that Anton decided to splash the cash one year too late. Reading also won category, won academy status that summer. But Anton soon went off the boil. And he ran out of money. Most of which was provided by his father in the first place. The finalization of the deal was off the cards, and Reading were unable to spend money for the remainder of the campaign. The Royals returned to Sir John Medeski to find a new owner, this time one that would finish the deal. Meanwhile, the club was in a mess. Not only had Reading missed out on promotion, but they were also forced to sell their star striker, Adam Lafondra, to avoid a hefty fine in 2014. Many rumours emerged about who the Royals' new owners would be. But none became a reality until a deal with a group of Thai business owners was completed. They promised incredible developments at the club, hoping to build Royal Elm Park. A nice, new park around the stadium, which wasn't cheap. However, in 2017, the Thai consortium sold the club and left Reading searching for new owners, again, in stepped Dae Yong and Dae Zhu Li, who had made a previous attempt to buy Hull City. The previous year, the family business pair have rarely been seen in public since their takeover. 2016 seemed to go well at first, with new manager Yap Stam making 11 summer signings. Little did they know that some of these foolish signings would cause part of the problem. These players went on to make the playoff final but they sadly lost to Huddersfield on penalties. This one game alone was the major turning point in Reading's finances. They hired Ron Gourlay that summer as CEO, and Gourlay loved to spend. His plan was clear, offer players really high wages in the hope that they will win promotion. That, yeah, which would have worked if the Royals won promotion. But it went the opposite way, and Reading had a poor season. The rumours were that Rural depleted among the team, and both Stam and new manager Paul Clement were intimidated by the CEO, as he built himself his own office. To put it simply, Gole bought Reading flop Shane Aluko for £7.5 million, as well as signing players such as Sam Baldock, Mark McNulty and Chris Martin, who he paid fortunes to every week to play terribly. Gole left in 2018, with the club facing relegation from the championship. Cure transfer masterclass. One transfer window after Ron left, as Reading signed World Cup winner Emi Martinez, as well as Ovia Jaria, 
Louis Baker, Matt Miazga and Nelson Oliveira. Reading were, for once, phenomenal. And they survived another year of championship football. Fans even celebrated manager Jose Gomez's glory with a Portugal day on the last day of the season. Covid had an impact on the club the following year, as the Royals, obviously, couldn't receive any money. However due to Gole's spending spree, Reading headed into 2020, with a transfer embargo, and they only spent a fee on one player across the next three years. To top this, the wage bill also went against EFL regulations, and resulted in the club receiving a six-point deduction in both the 2021-22 season, as well as the 2022-23 season. This second deduction cost the Royals dearly, as they suffered relegation to League One. Now, the club is in trouble. They have a first-team squad of less than 11 players. Little financial backing and limited backroom stuff. It's going to be even more of a rocky ride. Other key figures. Keiju Robchen was involved in many of the silly transfers and negotiated for high wages, with several players who didn't deserve the money. Everyone blamed Liam Moore for Reading's point deduction last season. But this probably shouldn't have been the case. Thomas since earns over 30k a week, which was presumably a result of his dad Paulins offering him the good contract. So there you have it. It has truly been an awful ride for the Royals in recent years. Do you think things will soon start to look up, or will they get worse?